Hello, this is Chrissy from The Uncommon Ground and welcome to Sharp Spring Training. This is the last module. Um, congratulations for coming this far. I'm really excited about this module because this is where we learn how to plan what's next. So Sharp Spring, as you know, is very powerful and there are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of pieces. There are a lot of building blocks, but unless you put them together in a meaningful way, it's not going to do anything. So you need to understand that you have to put a lot of thought into what you want to happen. A really great thing to do is to sit down with your team and write down your sales process from beginning to end, right from the very first contact, from your marketing efforts, what happens? Too many companies drive their sales process by responding and reacting to the customer. We don't want to do that anymore. We want to drive the sales process. We want to go, if you do this, then this is going to happen. If they do this, this is going to happen. And we are going to plan the sales process in that way. So we are going to move ahead and I'm going to show you how to begin thinking about a good workflow. So the next thing that we need to do is open up an Excel sheet. If you need us to send you this Excel sheet, uh, that's fine. We can send that to you, just let us know. Uh, or you can make your own, it's a it's pretty simple spreadsheet. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a title and we're gonna call it uh, warranty registration. And what's the purpose of this automation? In our SharpSpring instance, we want these customers to, after they make a purchase, we want them to register their warranty with us. So we're going to say, all right, so now you can see these three different columns. One is what needs to happen. Is this an email landing page list or a form? And is this a trigger, an action, or a time delay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go make sure these are numbered. And this is because later on we're going to sort them and we want to be able to make sure we can get them in chronological order again after we sort them. All right, so what needs to happen? The first thing that needs to happen is a purchase. And whether this is uh, done through the pipeline or if it's done through uh, an invoice being made in a different, uh, in your accounting program and it's integrated with SharpSpring, there's a bunch of different ways where SharpSpring can be notified that a purchase was made, whether it's manual or automated. Now, once the customer purchases a product, we want to add them to a list called all customers. That way we always have a list of all of our customers we want to add to a list called newsletter so that way we can send a newsletter to our customers and after their purchase we want to wait a week like give them time to set up and try their new coffee maker and then after a week we want to send them an email that thanks them for their purchase And in that email will be a button to click to a landing page that will guide them through registering their warranty. So we're going to click to a landing page. And from that landing page, they're going to click to the form, which is also embedded on a landing page. And then when they submit the form, they're going to get a thank you page. Now, what if they don't open the email or what if they don't click through to that landing page and they just ignore it? Well, in that case, we can wait a week and we can send them another email. So then we'll send them a customer reminder email. Now, if they still don't do it, let's wait a week and let's send the email again. And then we're gonna wait a week and if they still haven't filled it out, we're going to notify the sales rep. And then in this way, the sales rep can now decide what action to take. So now we go through here, we know what needs to happen. All of these things need to happen. And then when they do, let's add one more. When they do, we also want to send everybody that fills out the form. We want to add to 
list of warranty registrants. That way we can quickly look to see everybody that has filled out that, that registration form and quickly look up who has and who hasn't. So now we go through here and we decide whether this is an email, a landing page, a list, or a form, or if it's something that has to be done. So customer purchase pro purchases product. Now that would be a trigger. So when the customer purchases a product, we don't actually have to make anything. Uh, we don't have to make any of these things, so we'll skip to the next one. Add to a list of all customers, so we need to make a list. Add list to newsletter, so we need to make this list. Wait a week. We don't need to make anything for that. Send a thank you email, so we need to make an email. Now we have to go to a landing page, so we need to make that landing page. And then there's a form, so we need to make this form. And then we have to make a page for registering, to thank you for registering, so that's a landing page. And then we wait a week, so we don't need to make anything for that. And we need to make an email to remind them. We're waiting a week, so we don't need to make anything for that. We're gonna use the same email, so we don't make a separate email for that. Wait a week, and then we're notifying the rep. And then here we have add list of warranty registrations, so we need to make a list for that. Now let's go and see what are the action items in the automation. So what do we have to think through on a technical level to make sure that it's gonna work properly? So customer purchases product, this is a trigger. That's what's gonna trigger this automation. A list, so when they add it to the list, that's actually going to be an action. Add to a list, that's an action. Send a thank you email, that's an action. Wait a week, that's a time delay. Send a thank you email, that's an action. Click to a landing page, that's actually within um, the flow of the email so that you don't have to add that to the workflow. When they get the email, it's clear, they have directions to click to the landing page, it's going to bring them through the landing page funnel, so we don't need to include that into the workflow so that we also don't need to add this or this. That's going to happen automatically based on the email and the landing page funnel. So now we need to wait a week. So this is a time delay. We're gonna send the customer an email, that's an action. We're gonna wait a week, that's a time delay. Send them another email, that's an action. We're going to wait a week, that's another time delay. Notify the, the rep, so that's a notification, which is also an action. And then we're going to add them to a list of warranty registrations once they actually do it. So then that's also an action. So there we go, we have now this spreadsheet tells us what needs to happen, that we've thought that through, we know what we have to build, and we know how to put it together. So we're going to sort this, and now we have it sorted into email, form, landing page, and list. The next thing we're going to do is copy the two emails, go to the to-do page, emails needed to execute automation. We're gonna paste them here. We're going to grab the forms, over to to do. We'll find forms needed to execute automation. We'll paste them here. Then we're going to click on the landing pages. Paste them there. And lists. We need three lists. So now we have a nice spreadsheet with all of the work that has to get done. This is how we build all of the building blocks. So that will be the next, very next step is to build all of these. As they're built, you can just put, yes, they're built, yes, they're built, yes, yes. And when they're all built, now you can put together the automation. So now we go back into SharpSpring. So now we go to automation, visual workflows, create a visual workflow. We're going to call this register warranties. So here is our visual workflow builder and we can refer back to our spreadsheet, go back to the automation plan, and now we just need to sort it chronologically, smallest to largest, there we go. So that's why it's important to make sure they're numbered so that you can, you can sort them back to the action that needs to go first. So the customer purchases a product, that's a trigger. So we need to, here, add a trigger. In this particular case, we're gonna say has the field because when we're gonna mark them as a sale and it's going to be a custom field with the product that they have. So the field name is product 
and the field value we're going to say includes the word coffee. So all of our products have the word coffee in them, Coffee Matico. So anytime that they purchase something, it's going to say Coffee Matico and then the product. So this will trigger every time they purchase a product. And you can refer back to your sheet again. So what do we need? We need it to be added to a list of all customers and a list of newsletters. And those are both actions. Go back in and we add an action, add to list, add to list of all customers. Okay, and we also add them to a list of newsletter recipients. And then if we look back at our Excel sheet, we have wait a week. So we now we have a time delay. So you can see here time delay. And we're going to wait seven days. And the next thing we'll go back to our workflow send a thank you email. So that's an action. So here, action, we're going to send the email and we're going to send the email called thank you for your purchase. We'll wait till the next available business hours. Okay. Now when, when the customer goes through this, they're going to go to the email, they're going to click through the landing page and they're going to register their, their warranty. It's going to send them a thank you page. So we don't need to put any of this in here. That's just going to happen. Okay, so after they get sent the email, we are going to add, go back to our sheet. So they get the thank you. Now we're gonna wait a week. So we're gonna do a time delay of seven days. And if they haven't, we're gonna we send the email. Please remember to register your warranty. We're gonna wait till the next business hours to send it. And then we're gonna wait a week again. So we've sent them one, we've sent them two. We're gonna add another time delay. We're gonna wait seven days. And then we're gonna send it one more time. Send the email. Please remember to register your warranty. Wait until the next business hours, okay. And then we're going to, you can see here, wait a week, send it again wait a week and then we're going to notify the sales rep that they didn't fill out the warranty. So we're going to wait a week and if they still haven't filled it out we're going to send a notification to the user. We're going to send a notification to Bob that that person has not filled out their, their warranty but when available we're going to send it to the lead owner instead. So that would be the, the sales rep for that person. There we go. So now if they do click it and go through the whole process, you can see here this was send them the email. What we're going to do is we're going to add another trigger. So when they do visit the email, so this is the email, thank you for your purchase. We're actually going to set the URL of the page that they click to, the landing page which is right here. We're gonna copy the URL and we're gonna paste it here. So if they open the email and click on this link, it's going to be removed from the rest of the action group. So this is gated trigger and open trigger. Gated trigger is uh, fire if the email is sent as part of this visual workflow. So they have to be part of this, or you can also have it an open trigger. So even if the email was sent as part of a smart mail, but let's keep it as a gated trigger for now. Okay, so there we go. So when, if they don't, or if they go ahead and register their warranty, what did we want to do? We wanted to add them to a list of warranty registrants. So we will, so here if they visit that page, now we have an action and we add them to a list and the list is of warranty registrants. So there we go. Now we can do that same action here after every time they're sent an email. So here we add another trigger, visits from the email. So remember to register your warranty. If they click on the link, we can remove them from the parent action group. And then we can add them to a list of warranty registrants. And then again here, 
if they get this final email, the third email, and they go through and they visit from the email and they go to the landing page, then it removes them from the action group and OK. And then we'll also add these people to the list. Action, add to list of warranty registrants. And there we go. We've made our entire workflow from our Excel sheet. Every one of these things is happening. We've built all of these and now we've put it all into the workflow. You can check it over and go up to the top. So if they have the product that says coffee, they're added to a list of all customers. They're added to a list of newsletter recipients. It waits a week. It sends them an email. If they go to the page, it takes them out of the rest of the automations and it adds them to a list of warranty registrants. If they ignore this email, in a week they get sent that email again or a reminder email. If they go through the email to the page, it takes them off the rest of this and it adds them to a list of warranty registrants. And if they ignore that email, it waits a week, it sends it again. And if they go through to the, the page and they do what we want them to do, it takes them off of it and adds them to a list of warranty registrants. It waits another week and if they still have ignored it, there must be a problem. Uh, maybe it's going to their junk mail or maybe their email address has changed and it sends a notification to the lead owner and they can contact the customer to, um, to resolve it. So when you're all done, you can make the workflow active and there we go, that's it. So hopefully this will help you plan your automations. If you need any help, as always, contact us and we can walk you through and help you brainstorm some of your ideas as well. Thanks so much, bye-bye.